A series with massive implications in the American League West and the AL wildcard begins tonight. The Mariners at the Rangers, 8.05 p.m. Eastern at Globe Life Field. It's Miller going up against Dunning. Ryan Roland Smith joining me now. He, of course, played for the Mariners for four seasons, and he now covers the Mariners on Root Sports, also does some work for um, Major League Baseball internationally. Ryan, great to see you. Appreciate you being here as always. Huge series. I know that this one is something that everyone has their eyes on. Take me through this Mariners team over the course of the season. What gives you the most confidence that they can get the job done? And conversely, what gives you the most pause? Well, you know, it's interesting. You know, the first half, it, w it was really disappointing. It was really tough to sort of put your finger on one uh, situation as to what was, you know, kind of the, the letdown because there's so many expectations. And then I think what happened was at the trade deadline, they didn't do a whole lot, right? They only got, they only gave up Paul Sewell, just got a couple guys back in Dominic Canzone and Rojas. I think everyone just kind of settled in at that point. Everyone knew where they were going to be. The expect expectations changed a little bit, and they just went on an absolute tear. I think they're on this tear for so long, they clawed their way back into the AL West, and then they kind of got exhausted. They went on the last road trip they were on. They struggled. The starting pitching, which has really been the foundation of this team, started to struggle a little bit. We weren't getting deep in the games. George Kirby made some comments that went around baseball. <laughs> and I think after that, the Dodgers series, they were swept. I think just now recently, they've kind of caught their stride. Oakland helped them out because they walked into that ballpark. There wasn't the, 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 the huge crowds and they could just kind of catch their breath and get recalibrated. So they're in a good spot right now, but man, it's been an up and down, really interesting season, uh, especially when you, when you split the first half and the second half up, that is for sure. All right, I want to ask you a little bit more about the starter going tonight. When we talk about the Mariners pitching, we oftentimes mention, you know, Gilbert. We mentioned Kirby. We mentioned Castillo. But Miller's had a pretty good run here as of late. He'll need to continue to do that on the Hill tonight. What makes him effective? How do you know he's oh, on? I think, yeah, I think Bryce Miller, you know, when he first burst onto the scene, it was that fastball, the, the high RPM, top of the strike zone. But he even admitted too. I remember chatting to him early on in the year and he said, look, I'm kind of running out of gas because he's trying to adjust to the major league season. You know, in, in AAA now, they, these kids, they're, they're, you know, 75 to 85 pitches and they keep them warm until they get to the big leagues. And all of a sudden they got the four days off in between as opposed to the one start a week. And so he really had to work, figure out how to adjust to that schedule. And then, he spent a little bit of time on the IL. He had a bit of a blister. That gave him a breather. But he's really, you know, sort of refigured out. He's refigured out how to pitch at this level with that fastball. Now, all of a sudden, he's starting to find these secondary pitches. I think tonight, though, and, and you talk about this crazy stretch that's about to happen in the AL West and, and for the wild card race. But I think with Bryce, you know, with the Texas offense, if he can get through that first, second, third inning, get that first time through the lineup, and keep him at bay once we get to the fifth and sixth inning. He's going to be good to go. But this is a massive start for him. He has to get into a groove because there's been times where he starts to pitch away from contact. He gets away from that fastball a little bit early on. And then all, that's when you start seeing those crooked numbers. But, man, he has been impressive lately, especially after having this little resurgence. All 10 of their remaining games, you know this better than anybody, are against the Rangers and the Astros. Not to overlook the Rangers because that's a huge series starting tonight in Texas, but how do you think they will fare against the Astros? You're much better, 8-2 and two against right. the... Um, right. They have the advantage the Mariners do over Houston. Yeah, and, and that's that's kind of been the, the, the flip of the script, right? Usually, I mean, obviously we've seen the Astros dominate the AL West for years and years. Um, it, it was really interesting. I was down in Houston... Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, calling those games. And there's just a different feel in that ballpark. Usually you walk into Minute Maid Park, and, and this goes for a lot of teams around baseball, but you walk into that building and you just have this feeling that like, even if you got a two or three run lead, nothing is safe. It didn't feel that way at all down at Minute Maid. So the thing that, the, when I'm looking at this last stretch, you got 10 games, seven against uh, the Texas Rangers, three against the Houston Astros. I honestly think the Mariners... They match up. I know the Houston Astros have have have, res, have, have you know, had this resurgence. I just think they they match up so much better against the Houston Astros. The Texas Rangers, as many of the struggles they've had with the starting pitching, 
uh, and the bullpen. I just think that the, the Rangers scare me a little bit. If they can jump out early, it's going to be tough. But I think with the Houston Astros, especially going back to Seattle, uh, I think they match up so much better against the Astros. So a couple huge series coming up. I think they have to take two or three from the Texas Rangers uh, and then take care of business against the Astros once they get home. Yeah, you're absolutely right. If you look at the numbers, Ryan, they're one and five against the Rangers this season and eight and two against the Astros. I wanted to make sure I corrected myself there because they've played very well against Houston. Okay, speaking of you're not used to saying that, I get it. Trust me. (laughs) Julio Rodriguez has been otherworldly. We this is what the Mariners thought they were getting when they signed him to that big contract. He's been so much fun to watch. How has he taken his game to the next level? Well, you know, going back, I keep going back to the first half, right? Because everything that, that Julio Rodriguez sets the tone for the rest of this offense. And I think with him, you know, coming into this this season, it's his sophomore year, this, the expectations have changed, right? Because he's looking to be that face of baseball and he loves it. He, he really you know, embraces that. And he just tried to do way too much, I think. Trying to cover both sides of the plate. Guys were pitching him in a ton. He wasn't getting that barrel to that pitch. And then they could just expand on the other side of the plate. Once we got into the second half, he just kind of took a breath. He made some adjustments physically, but his approach was just completely different. And now all of a sudden in this last stretch, he's been able to get to the barrel, keep the hands inside the ball and get the barrel to the inside part of the plate. And you see the reaction from pitchers. When, when they can throw a fastball, you know, 94, 95 on the inner half, half of the plate, and he's able to get barrel to it, even when it's an inch the, you know, on, on the hands, just you can just see them. They're just like, well, what do I do now? It's just completely different. But this offense, the, the energy of this offense, you know, uh, lives and breathes with what Julio Rodriguez does. It's so evident. And it's been fascinating what he's been able to do, the numbers he's been able to do, even getting off to that, that slow first half. It's it's fun to watch. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's becoming historic what he's able to do this second year in the big leagues. Yeah, he already reached 100 RBI yesterday. He was also hit by a pitch, but Scott Service says it's okay. He's going to be fine. He's going to be ready for that Texas Rangers series. That begins tonight, Ryan. Best of luck. We appreciate you taking the time to be with us, giving us an insight uh, on the Mariners. We appreciate it. Of course, thanks.